same I'm doing fine I'm feeling great You're not my fan You can't relate Straight talk going Stay not safe Before you cross me Look both ways Leaving the scene With no trace None in my lead You out of place I'm not at the top I'm out of space Can't eat with us We're out of place I'm doing fine I'm feeling great You're not my fan You can't relate Straight talk going State to state Hey guys, what's going on? It's your host, your boy, George Mackay. And as you can see to the screen left to me, I got somebody special. I got somebody who is a comedian, uh, an improv expert, a wrestler, an actual member of the U.S. Coast Guard, a captain by trade in and out of the ring. Please help me welcome the captain, Vicky Dreamboat to Straight Talk Wrestling. How hey, are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I can't complain. It's uh, it's a Monday afternoon. We're going to talk wrestling. And there's nothing more better than talking wrestling with somebody who is in the business and enjoys wrestling as much as I do. Totally. So. Yeah. I um, I want to make two quick amendments to your introduction, just so uh -oh. no one's led, led astray. I'm, I'm a trouble. U.S. Coast Guard licensed captain, but I've never okay. served. So I don't want to take away from all of the wonderful men and women who do serve in the Coast Guard. I've never done that. So just to clarify, because I would hate to take credit for something I didn't do. <laughs> okay. Um, That's right. Listen, and the then, uh, I can only give you so much research. So, 100%. You know, 100%. But still, yeah. a licensed captain. That's pretty yes. freaking cool. That's pretty freaking well, cool. Well, you know what it is, is I'm Coast Guard approved. They gave me the license. So that's okay. something, right? At least I might not have been in there, but they looked at my application and they looked at my experience and they said, yeah, you can drive boats. So <laughs> we'll take that. But I'm um, super grateful for everyone who's ever served. And I never want to take away from that. That's all. Absolutely. No, 100%. Anybody that's serving over there fighting for freedoms every day deserves all of our utmost respect. And we hope and pray that everyone that's over there, wherever they are fighting the good fight, comes home, especially at this time of the year, because this is going to be dropping first week of December. We're going to be three weeks out from Christmas. So you are right. my first guest in the month of, you know, Christmas, the Christmas month. Isn't it the Christmas strange? month. Isn't it strange that Halloween really doesn't get a month? Thanksgiving doesn't get a month. But Christmas gets the entire month, even the couple days after leading up to New Year's, you still you still feel very Christmassy. Totally. Yeah, it's garbage. Halloween month should be a thing. I think Halloween's my favorite holiday. So I think that October should be Halloween month. And I would like I'm to right file there it with you. As you can see, I just don't the, know who to file it to. The man, the myth, the Ooh. legend right behind me. Yeah, that's good. That's good yeah. stuff. I love so, that. Now that I know you're a horror movie aficionado or you like the spooky stuff, what's your kind of go-to? I mean, you and your your fiance, what's your go-to scary movie? I'm not sure if he's into scary movies. I hope he is. Sometimes the opposite is that my wife is not. She can only do Scream, and I know what you did last summer, and I won't do those because they're just god-awful. They're god-awful to me. Yeah, no, they're truly terrible. Um, so my husband uh, and I like to watch all sorts of different things. Um, he's not as horror movie-y, but he'll he'll sit and watch with me um, when I'm like, hey, we should watch a scary. Uh, I This year I kind of slacked because life happened and it was busy, um, but I watched... <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen Hell House LLC. I love found footage. I love it. I And he hates it. He won't watch it with me. He's like, this is garbage. And I'm like, but that's what makes it so good. Is that it's terrible. Um, so Hell House LLC is like one of my favorite movies of all time, just because it's so, it's just so extra. And I love it so much. Uh, and then I also like truly, spook, you know, like um, Baba Duke. I loved mm -hmm. Mama. I loved. Um, anything with ghosts I watch uh, I don't know if you've ever seen It Follows it's kind of like a terrible movie but it's great I don't yeah, know that's how the one to where it. it follows you until you sleep with someone then it follows the person you slept the with the person right? you slept with yeah yes yes, yes. yeah yeah that's, what uh, I... that's like STDs kind of following you around that the whole movie is pretty much based on an STD if I'm not mistaken yeah it's like an STD demon <laughs> STD demon <laughs> STD I like that it's an STD like demon that. yeah yeah, so that's one thing I got to talk called. to you about is, um, oh, yeah. I, I said fiance, so I got to correct myself. I, my apologies, your husband. Yeah. Uh, you have to be the first person in the wrestling world that I believe has actually had their wedding dress made by the same people that make ring gear. That's super interesting. Can you touch on that for a second? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. I am. Um, it's so funny. I actually just got my new gear. Sorry, I'm going to plug from Gnarly Garb Gear. She is amazing. Love. It's actually both of them. It's Devin and... Um, uh, Trina, they run the company. And I, I couldn't, I knew that I wanted something custom and I knew that I wanted a tear away, right? Um, Cause I wanted to be like long, pretty dress. That's a two piece, like crop top top and then long skirt, but I wanted to tear it away because we were putting our friend through a table as you do. Um, so I don't know if I'm the first or only, but I'm the only one that I know of who was like, well, gear makers know how to do crazy stuff. So maybe I'll hit him up. And she was so excited to do it. Came up with the design, had it done lickety split. Um, 
sent it to me so I could try it on and then like resized a bunch of stuff. I mean, had it to me a week before the wedding. And I think I ordered it in like July and I was getting married in September. So it was a quick turnaround. And it was like, if you ask most women what they spend on their wedding dresses, I guarantee you I spent a quarter as much and I had twice as much, if not, I mean, a million times better customer service. Um, it was exactly what I wanted to a T. So that was super cool experience. And it was like a very wrestle wedding. Um, so it just felt right. And, you know, like, sorry, last thing I'll say, I'm very caffeinated. <laughs> last thing I'll say is I'll always prefer to support a small business over a major entity, just because like my husband and I are small business owners. I would rather support somebody who supports me in my career too and support them in theirs. Um, and so it very much felt like I was keeping it in the family in that way. Um, because this is somebody who made my gear that I could wear on on dark and made it for all like the major wrestling promotions. And so to see like for her, her to be involved in that very special moment, even though we've never even met in person, was really cool. Absolutely. It sounds like it sounds like a fantastic moment. And um, it looked like from what you posted on your Instagram, it looked like it was one hell of a party. You guys had a great time. And so how is married life treating you thus far? So, so good. We had our uh, our two month wedding anniversary three days hey. ago. So yeah um, thank you very fun we're to i he's not but i am like that annoying person he's like it's been a month it's been two months it's been three i'm sure after several years the novelty will wear off but it's still you know it's still so fresh i'm like we're newlyweds we gotta keep trying to get free stuff and having fun with it you know what i mean um so i think uh yeah it's been really good i mean we just kind of we haven't taken like a proper honeymoon but we've taken mini moons like small trips and that's what we're going to do over the next year because we can't leave the business for that long and you know um just with wrestling, it's very hard to take a long period of time off. And I had to take almost all of September off for uh, the wedding. So we're, we're slowly but surely getting the honeymoon thing figured out. But yeah, it's, it's awesome. Super great. Very similar to engaged life. <laughs> Absolutely, it is. You know, when that transition from engagement to marriage, uh, the the early stages of it, very much similar to that. I believe it's when you get to a stage of like my, like I said, my wife and I, we met when we were nineteen, married at twenty four, had our first child at twenty five, had our second at thirty two, and I am literally a week out while we're recording this. I'm a week out for my thirty ninth birthday, so age Ooh, is creeping congrats. around the corner. Well, I don't feel thirty nine. I look fifty, but I don't feel thirty nine. So that's no. good. That's good. You don't look 39. If you, okay. you would have asked me to guess, I wouldn't have said 39. Perfect. Well, you know, I will, I'll take the compliment. Anytime somebody tells me I look younger than I am, it gives me a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, an ego. I'm like, yes, I still have, I still have gas in the tank. This is sweet. I love it. 100%. <laughs> so, 100%. Uh, so one thing I got to talk about, shout out to uh, Phantom and Friends podcast, because that's one of the interviews that I watched in preparing for our conversation. And he asked a lot of great questions. Um, I know about how you kind of got started in this thing from that interview and how you kind of fell in love with wrestling and the whole nautical theme that's behind the Vicky Dreambow character. But some of my listeners who may not know you as well as I do from these interviews, you want to touch on that, talk about how you came up with the Vicky Dreamboat character and how you got into this crazy world that we both love so much, pro wrestling? Yeah. Yes, I would love to. Thank you. Um, try to do a short version without me talking too fast because you know, I just get so excited. So um, back in 2020, my now husband, then whatever, and I were uh, met on an improv comedy show that was an improv comedy long form show called Glimmer that was based off Glow. So it was like a narrative long form wrestling themed show. Um, it wasn't a wrestling show. It was an improv show. And in that there was a, there, uh, he had already started training wrestling. So he took a bunch of the girls from the show. It was eight women and two men to a wrestling training school um, called Evolve or 321 Battle back in Seattle. Uh, and we did like one introductory class and I was like, what, this is a thing? This is a real thing you can just do? Um, so I did that in January of 2020. And then as, as you might remember, just some, some stuff went down in 2020. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that happened. Mm -hmm. um, but towards the end of 2020, one of our good friends bought a wrestling ring and put it in his backyard. And he said, hey, if you guys help me kind of maintain it and everything, I'll train you for free. Um, so like one day, every couple of weeks, I would go and learn how to roll and bump. And then it, it kind of like November, 2020, we decided we were going to move to Florida. So we made the move in February. I didn't train at all. Didn't like, didn't have anything to do with wrestling really. I had my first live match in July of 2021, um, which was awesome at 5CC Wrestling in Seattle against uh, Brittany Wonder and Jamie Senegal. And they put me through it because I didn't know anything. I was like, what's, what, what are we doing? Where am I? Uh, uh. like I had no I had never wrestled in front of a crowd and I was very comfortable in front of the crowd like I've been a performer my whole life but the wrestling part I was like eh, ugh, I don't know how to use my hands um and so that happened and then I had another match in September and I decided uh earlier that summer like I'm gonna save up to go to the Nightmare Factory so October 2021 I go to the Nightmare Factory um start training for real basically <laughs> like start getting formally trained 
Um, and then I'm supposed to make my AW Dark debut the first week of December, 2021. But the last week of November, while training for that debut, I break my foot. Um, so broke my foot, was out until February of this year, 2022. Like super bad break, the whole situation. Um, and then this year in April is when I started taking bookings and wrestling regularly more, not like full-time, but actually like out in the wrestling world. So it's a very, very short uh, recap of <laughs> the whole, like the whole timeline. Or tried to make it short. It was probably like 20 minutes, but tried to make it short. No, absolutely was not. You got it under under five minutes, and I'll guarantee that 150%. You did a fantastic job. And you know what? You've made up for it. Uh, having that setback with the injury, uh, you've made up for it. You've had some amazing matches. You debuted on Dark finally this year, which was incredible. <laughs> and that's where I first got a glimpse of you. I was like, who is this girl? I'm I'm intrigued. I gotta I gotta see more. And then I started, you know, doing the Instagram thing. It's not called internet stalking anymore. It's really just if you're out there, you're allowed to view these things because we're following. Outcome. Exactly. Yeah. So I started following, and then you were gracious enough to follow us back, which was phenomenal. 100%. Probably because of the mini host, not because of me. I understand that she's way more adorable than I am. I get it. I totally get it. Uh, when you're out shining, this is not on your part. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, you know what? It's good genes. It's good genetics, really, is what it is. No, but she's my she's my angel. She's my love of my life, along with my wife and my daughter. Uh, being surrounded by all these women, uh, it made me more of a fan of women's wrestling than I already was because I love to watch my daughters watch these women kick ass, take names, and be so strong role models for a generation. Like when when my wife was uh, a kid getting into wrestling, all she really had was Elizabeth and Sherry. There yeah. wasn't really this, what there is now. And Medusa, obviously, Alondra Blaze for some who don't know. But, um, you know, now we got into a generation where literally you can pick uh, anyone you want to go for. You want to pick a little bit of the badass. You go for uh, like a Sasha Banks type of character. You want to pick, you want to pick the strong lineage. You go for Charlotte Flair. You want to pick, uh, you want to pick someone sassy. You go for either one of the Renegade twins, which are phenomenal people. I've had them on my show. They're they girls. Oh yeah, they're, I love they're those awesome. Girls. And they actually gave me a lot of advice because I mean, I asked them about how their dad put up with two daughters and they gave me a lot of advice. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, my next question is being being in a generation now of female wrestlers where you have that chance to really inspire the next generation way more than you probably did when you were a young wrestling fan. How does that make you feel knowing that so many young girls can watch wrestling now and cheer for their heroes because there are so many options now for a hero in this day and age in pro wrestling. Totally, that's a great question. Um, I'll first just say, just for the record, I didn't grow up watching wrestling at all. It wasn't even in my sphere. I didn't start watching wrestling until 2018. So I'm like, I'm not just green to the business, I'm green to the industry. Like I didn't have that experience as a kid, um, which in a way is actually kind of an edge and it's also a disadvantage. Um, but I will say that I, um, I feel a great sense of responsibility for being, uh, especially, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very much at the indie level, but I'm at the level where every single time I win, win or lose, you know, over or not, um, I have these little girls coming up to me wanting to take pictures, wanting autographs, wanting to do all this stuff, asking me like uh, all sorts of questions. Most of them are really little. So the questions don't make a lot of sense, which I love. It's a lot of fun. They're like, did you drive your boat here? I'm like, yeah, of course I did. Of course I did. <laughs> of course I did. I'm not going to say no to you. You're three. Um, but I think that, uh, there's a lot of pressure to be a positive role model while still like market myself to an adult audience. And that's tricky, right? Because it's like doing fitness modeling, bikini modeling, any of that stuff. I enjoy that aspect of my career and I'm grateful for the opportunity to do that stuff. But I don't want a 14 year old girl on Instagram scrolling through all these pictures being like, well, this image is highly edited and looks like this. So this is what I'm supposed to look like, which is why I don't wear makeup or edit any of my photos. Um, if other people edit my photos, that's not on me, you know what I mean? Um, I barely wear makeup to shows and stuff, which is not to say that other women shouldn't. It's just for me, it's like, I want the little little girls to be like, oh, how do you do your makeup? And I'm like, I don't know. I threw some eyeliner on, kid. Like, I really don't have any idea what I'm doing. Like, you're beautiful exactly as you are. Just do your thing. Um, and it's another reason why I think in terms of the character, uh, obviously, like I was a boat captain for a long time. And so Vicky Dreamboat, you play what you know, Ricky Steamboat, one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Um, but in terms of like being kind of a goody two shoes or being like a do gooder character, a lot of people give me uh, give me flack for it because they're like, well, that's like that's easy, and it's like actually it's very hard. It is, in my opinion, it is so much easier to be like I'm the killer in leather, and I walk in and I beat people up, and I'm mean, right? And and that's not to say that like pretty much every single woman that I know works heel is incredibly good at it because they are specially skilled and they play a unique character. But playing a unique character in wrestling 
uh, unique characters are few and far between, I think. Um, a lot of people are some generic version of a badass, right? Uh, and so I think like being able to be like, hey, I'm like a strong gimmicky character who always says I want a fair fight. If I'm gonna fight, it's gonna be fair. Um, I'm not gonna cheat. I'm not gonna do you dirty. If you do, do, if you do me dirty, I'll punch you in the face because you tried to get one over on me, right? Um, but being that kind of role model and then kind of like upholding those values, I think uh, that's <laughs> that's what I'm going for. But I don't know if I'm accomplishing it because I'm less than a year in. So I don't know if that answers your question at all. I feel like I got off on a little bit of a tangent. No, it absolutely did. It, it answered okay. the question and it unpacks another question, which was, again, shout out to Fandom and Friends because it was a great question. Since we're on this subject of being a positive role model and not having the photos edited or doctorate. And again, like you said, makeup doesn't matter if you wear makeup. That's you do your yeah, thing. Yeah, good for them. Yeah. Yeah, great for you. It, it accentuates your already natural features, in my opinion. Right. Um, sex sells as our yeah. good friend at friend fandom and friends said sex sells and even in this day and age where we have so much positivity it's still very much sexualized in a lot of ways not nearly as bad as it was in the 90s and in the early 2000s when it was over sexualized i mean puppies you know, yeah. yeah they have puppies and thank god nobody was uh you know nobody had handprints on nobody has handprints on their boobs nowadays which is yeah, a good yeah, thing yeah yeah but you Helpful. look at you look at the generation, and I get it. You're not a fan, but you've gone back, obviously, and you watch some of the older stuff. So you know what I'm talking about. You you came in yeah. to fall in love with this in 2018, but and from I'm what was there, now. yeah, from what it was there to now, it's an incredibly different atmosphere. But yeah. it's still there. Still is over sexualized in some way, shape, or form. How do you walk that line of still being strong, sexy, beautiful, dangerous in the ring? All those things. <laughs> How do you walk that line, but still try to find the positivity in knowing that there's a three-year-old girl that may be in that crowd that night that's going to want to come up to you and say, you're my favorite, you drove your boat here, and you rock. And also, I saw your butt. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think um, I, I said this on Fatim and Friends, and I'll say it again. Like, It doesn't bother me that sex sells because I know the world we live in. And as long as every woman who is dressing how she dresses is doing it because she wants to do it and it makes her feel strong and sexy and powerful and comfortable, like kudos to her, right? Um, and same to me, like I know what my gear looks like. I understand that. Uh, and I think that there's something about markability to multiple audiences without like having your bits hanging out um, in a way that would be like, mom, what's that? I've never seen that before, <laughs> you know? Um, I think that it's tricky because I, I feel like I'm contradicting myself uh, and I don't want to contradict myself, but I'll say that in order to be a woman in the industry, like you have to understand, actually to be in the wrestling industry at all, res wrestling, regardless of your gender, is a visual business. What you look like matters. You look at these guys with six packs, right? Like there are some incredible wrestlers on the indies who don't have six packs, who are in crazy good shape, who dudes, right? Uh, but they might not get signed because they don't have the aesthetic that people are looking for. Um, that the producers, that the promoters, that whoever is looking for. And this is this is TV, um, on TV, in film, like the way that you look matters. Uh, and it's unfortunate or it isn't, right? Because we all are in control of our own destinies and our own bodies. And so we can do things to like make ourselves more marketable as long as those things are not toxic and dangerous. And I think that for me is the line. The line for me is like, there was a period of time where I was just like starving myself, over-exercising, not doing not taking care of myself at all. Cause I was like, I have to have a six pack. It has to happen. And I have to have this shape and like this bodybuilder or whatever. Um, and not only did it not work because when you do that your body just holds on to all your food because it thinks you're in starvation mode uh, at least in the way that I was doing it. There are bodybuilders who know what they're doing. I was not one of those people, right? Um, but it also like, it made me miserable. It made me a bad learner. I was terrible in the ring. Um, and it made my life just a total living hell. Like I couldn't do anything. So I think as long as we're splitting the difference of like, here's my aesthetic, like, here's what I look like. Uh, here's, you know, whatever sexy gear I'm wearing. Um, but as long as it's not in such a way where it's like, I'm a walking stick figure and not because that's what my body looks like, but because I forced myself into it. That's the area that I have a problem with. That's the stuff that I'm like, I'm more interested in being an advocate, um, a advocate for a healthy body image and for like a healthy lifestyle rather than, I don't, I don't like to be against things as much as I like to be in favor of things. So I think I'm in favor of um, uh, positive body image um, within reason, <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. Um, but to your original point, just really quick, sex selling, it doesn't bother me. I don't think it's a problem because it does on both sides and it's, it's better now for sure for women. There was a period of time where the divas were like puppies and bra and panties matches and that's all they got. And that sucked because there were women who were talented athletes who didn't get to showcase that. That is no longer the case. 
Um, so I think it's actually um, really just not, I'm not saying on your part, but I think anyone who says that that's still the case with women's wrestling is being very disingenuous. There are a lot of women's wrestlers who are signed, who are talented athletes, and they didn't just get signed because of the way they look. They got signed because they're talented athletes and they happen to look hot as hell. Absolutely. It's two birds, one stone. Myself, I am on the journey of a positive body image. I'm a little bit totally. on the huskier side. So I uh, I recently started uh, working out, uh, got into yeah. uh, gym mode, and uh, I'm three classes in, so it's nothing to toot home about. But it's further than I've ever been. Because every other time I've tried to go back to working out, it's been like half a class, and now I'm going to go get an ice cream. But now it's uh, now it's three classes in. I'm changing the way I eat. I'm changing the way I look. I, I'm already noticing this, just the small changes of feeling better, not yeah. getting winded going up and down the stairs to my bedroom. That's a nice yeah. change of pace. It's a very nice change of pace. And it's um, it's great because I look at, uh, again, like you talked about, in this business, it's very visual. But much so like women are changing the landscape or have already changed the landscape about how they're respected and how they're showcased in this business. So have a lot of men. You look at a guy like yeah. Kevin Owens, no six pack, looks a lot like me. And, totally. uh, you know, I've been told that I, I doppelganger Kevin Owens and sometimes like when I let the beard grow out. Oh, and that's a couple. That's a compliment yeah. to me. That's an absolute compliment because he's a badass. But that gives guys like myself a chance to love this business that much more because there's somebody that looks like me that's kicking ass. So it's yeah. all around that wrestling is changing and a lot for the better. And yes. I think that's that's the coolest part about where we are in wrestling now. Another cool thing that you've done recently uh, is you had one hell of a match with Ashley Dambois. Oh, yeah. And I haven't seen the whole match, but I've seen clips that both were posted by you, by her, and by MEW. And yeah. it's it's fire. There's one clip where you are just going off. Shoulder oh, tackle, them. shoulder tackle, punches. Yeah, yeah. You, you hit hard. And the way it was filmed was phenomenal. Kudos to the MEW production team because the stuff that you've shown is fantastic. But what was it like being in the ring with... Ashley Dambois because I have seen her work live and she is fantastic and as are you but I think you really elevated yourself in that sure. match I think you leveled up in that match to a point where Vicky Dreamboat hit that glass ceiling a little bit and she punched through <laughs> and I think you kick it to another gear and that's a credit to who you were in the ring with telling that totally. story yeah well I'll say two things I'll say MEW social media does a great job and almost all of those clips or a lot of those clips are from impact visuals on Instagram he's a videographer based out of Georgia um, and he didn't actually start filming wrestling until Shalonse Royal and I had a match at Momocon with SCW back in May. We were the first wrestling match he ever filmed. And he was like, oh, I love this. So he does a lot of those clips. So just a quick shout out to him, um, that video credit, you know, credit where credit's due. Uh, Ashley, so Ashley was the first woman I ever trained with at the Nightmare Factory. Um, she was the first person I ever trained with, first female I ever trained with there. And first person I ever had a, a female I ever had a practice match with there as well. So we have a history, like we go way back. Um, and just breaking character, like, I, I love her. I love her so much. Uh, and so because we already had a natural chemistry, I feel like that was a big part of it. But she's extremely talented. She's been wrestling, I think, a year or a year and a half longer than me, um, two, two or three years or something like that. Uh, so, like, I knew that she had my back and I knew that she could support me. And because I know that we have similar training backgrounds, like, I'm not there anymore, but she's still in the Nightmare Factory training with Billy Gunn, QT, Cody, and everybody. Um, we just spoke the same language. Uh, so I think that that experience, um, we had actually just wrestled at Coastal Championship Wrestling on October 15th, and then we wrestled on October 29th at MEW. So we'd already worked once that month, and that was almost like our, like, it, it was a good match. Um, I don't know when it'll, when or if it'll be out, but it was almost like our warm-up to this match, because it was, there was a lot more build for the MEW match, because I, I had been there before, and then she was making her debut, and we're like the only women's match in the card. They're building their women's division. And so it was very important. And I think that's another reason why it was um, as successful as it was, just because she and I both understood uh, the importance and we gave reverence to that. Um, and so we were we were very meticulous in the way that we called and took care of and planned that match. Absolutely. And it shows in the clips. And I, I hope to see the full thing eventually one day, just enjoy the crap out of it with, uh, with my yeah. family. Um, so let's shift gears for a second away from wrestling. Let's go into comedy and improv because yeah. you are... You know, you're in that field as well. And it's so great because it adds layers to you as a performer, I believe, working in the comedy side, working in the improv side, because wrestling is a lot of improv. You have to think fast on your feet sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't have a pre-written promo. You got to just go in there and say what's in your mind or in your heart. Yeah, so you've got I to never have fast. a pre-written promo. <laughs> never, no, ever. And, and that's great. That's the one thing I think it's great about uh, indie wrestling is that you kind of cut your teeth. And it's okay yeah. to make a mistake because people oh, yeah. know that there's passion inside. 
And it's not like, a, you know, okay, you sit backstage, rehearse it for 15 minutes, then you go out there and you cut it. It's very much so different. Um, and also the comedy aspect, you perform in, in front of live crowds as well with the improv stuff. So, so Im it's think... improv comedy that I do. Improv comedy, yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I used to... yeah. Just so everybody knows, there's no stand-up no stand clips of me. No, it's no not going to happen. Clips. I'm still writing it. It's not going to be debut until the end of 2023. <laughs> well, I can't wait for that. Stand up. Vicky Dreamboat stand up. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Hopefully maybe we could get a little sneak peek tidbit later on in the show. We'll see what happens. I don't know. No, no pressure. No pressure. But um, what did you, what do you think that that, do you think that that actually helped you a lot more in your character building for wrestling, being with the improv, thinking fast on your feet, all that kind of stuff, learning how to control and kind of command a crowd where you needed it to go? Yes. Yes, yes, and I'll say um, I don't think I could have been a wrestler without improv and vice versa. Uh, I don't, I, they feed each other so much. The industries are so similar. Um, I mean, wrestling, the parallels are insane. And I, my husband and I own First Coast Comedy here in Jacksonville, which is an improv comedy club. So we only do improv comedy. And occasionally we let a stand up comedian come in and do their thing, um, you know, on like our off days or whatever on Sundays sometimes. But uh, every single Friday and Saturday, we're getting reps. So if I'm not wrestling, I'm performing improv. And that, is um it, it, i don't even know i don't even have words for how helpful it is i don't think that I, I i almost consider myself like more of a character than a wrestler it's like i'm a character who wrestles rather than a wrestler who has a character um because that's so much uh it's so much more comfortable to me um and it's so much more in my wheelhouse pun intended that uh playing vicky dreamboat vicky the captain dreamboat comes so much more naturally to me because of the improv experience um and thinking on the fly and being able to interact with the crowd um, being able to like communicate what you want to say in the fewest amount of words, which I'm not doing a very good job of right now because I'm very over caffeinated, as I've said. Um, but in like in a character setting and in a show setting, yeah, it helps incredibly. An incredible amount. Absolutely, absolutely. So um looking at uh, a couple of different avenues that this character could go. And actually what you talked about earlier, you touched on about how getting that the people to love you. It's so much more difficult to getting somebody to hate you because you could walk into any arena and you could sit there. Let's, for example, Jacksonville, Florida. If I'm a traveling wrestler and I get booked in Jacksonville, I can go to Jacksonville and say, the only thing good about the Jaguars is the fact that they're usually a practice team for everybody else in the NFL. Yeah, and yeah, I would yeah. get instant organic heat, especially in Jacksonville, because I just insulted your football team. Whereas you can go like, I mean, you look at so many different uh, characters or, or wrestlers who have tried like John Cena. When he first debuted, he was a good guy. He used to wear the shorts that were the colors of every sports team in every city. Horrible yep. gimmick. Horrible idea. <laughs> that he shed his that he shed it became the doctor of thugonomics and just started insulting everybody. And that's what I remember. Okay. And then from that yeah. transitioned into, you know, the US, you know, top tier, the new age Hulk Hogan, if you will. Eat your vitamins, say your prayers, drink your oval teen, all that good stuff. So when you look at the fact yeah. that it's so much harder to gain that good guy heat than it is that organic heat uh, or that heel heat uh, and you mentioned that wrestlers who are are playing heels that you've worked with they're specialized especially trained in that aspect where they know how to tighten things up when they need to have you ever thought about exploring the heel side if ever given the opportunity I've been a heel before I've been a heel before um I think that my my gimmick doesn't lend itself to the heel thing very well unless I'm like a drunken sailor which is fine, um, but I a lot of the promotions I work for are family friendly, and so me walking out just fake plastered, like it's not over, uh, and then the promoter's mad, right? That didn't happen, but I'm just imagining a scenario where it would. Um, I think that my number one thing, like anywhere you go, any wrestler will tell you that the most important thing in wrestling when you're interacting with other wrestlers is respect, right? Um, and so out of respect, I don't think I have any business being a heel until I'm better <laughs> at wrestling. I just don't, I don't think I have any business doing it. Um, I know how to, how to do it. I, I can do it. Um, it's just so incongruous to my character, my personality. And I think this baby face that uh, it's, it's a lot harder for me. It's way easier for me to get over as a baby face than it is as a heel, um, unless I'm working like someone who's much smaller than me and someone who's sweeter. So it's possible, but um, yeah, to answer your question, I've done it. I've thought about it. I, it's fun. It's really fun. Um, there's, there's something super exhilarating about getting booed, right? Uh, because you know that, I mean, at, at that point, it's like, it's kind of like, no news is good news. Any reaction is a good reaction. <laughs> uh, and I think that heels are like, as long as you're getting, as long as you're getting negative feedback, you're doing a good job. Um, but uh, I don't know. 
I've had several people say this to me and I think it's and yourself included. And I think it's interesting because people are like, it's easy for you to get a crowd on your side, right? And I don't know if that's true um, because so many people when they watch wrestling are expecting this like, like Steve Austin leather, just badass. Sorry, I said a bad word, but um, oh, totally like her <laughs> all the time. Don't worry about okay, it. Okay, cool. I like, I want your daughter to be able to listen to this and not be like, that girl is bad. Um, you should watch me watch <laughs> a Raptor game or a Maple Leafs game. I oh, swearing, yeah. I, my kids have both gotten used to swearing. They don't do it, thank God, but they both gotten used to it. You're good. Don't worry. Me with the Packers, though. Me with the Packers lately. Um, me with the Giants, you. okay? I'm a New York Yo. Giants fan, okay? So, yeah, I know. It's it's a rough we'll go. Talk right about now. that. We'll talk about that after the cast. But hey, um, just real quick, I don't think it's that easy to to get a crowd on your side, uh, especially like when it's. I wouldn't say that it's like a cutesy gimmick, but compared to most wrestlers, like I am, I am, I come out there as a goody two shoes through and through. I have a bubble gun. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I'm blowing bubbles, and the kids love me, and the parents are like, "Well, my kid's busy, so <laughs> do that." Um, and then you have this girl in like full leather, like doing the whole thing, coming out here, screaming at the crowd. Their wrestling fans are more likely, I think, to be interested in and want to watch the like badass, hardcore, leather bound, metal music, metal, heavy metal, like whatever person. And so there, there have been a few times where like I've gotten booed as a, as a baby. It's only, only twice. And once was because um, the person that was a face shouldn't have been a face. They should have been a heel, vice versa. Uh, all of that to say, I think like the improv skills help. Um, being a heel is fun, but I don't, uh, I don't think it's super easy either way. Like I think wrestling is just really hard wherever you are, however you, however you slice it. And I'm, I've just been fortunate to have a lot of things to my advantage, including all the incredible coaches at the Nightmare Factory and doing improv comedy as my day job, basically my job. Absolutely. No. And I, I was, I was right on the same wavelength with you. It's so much harder to get a crowd on your side. It's very easy. Like I was, what my example was say, it's very easy to go into a place as a heel to heat, talk to city, yeah. and get that heat. You could get that anywhere, but to actually go in there and to build this story of the underdog or build a story of the good guy, try and pick over evil sometimes can't work, especially when we had that change of guard where all of a sudden the bad guy became the good guy. And you found yourself cheering for the, the guy you should be booing. And booing the guy who should be cheering. Wrestling totally. is, is, is very fin finicky. The great thing about wrestling is, and I mean, it's not necessarily a great thing, but it is a thing, I should say, uh, is the fact that wrestling fans are the most vocal fans of any type of sport or entertainment there is out there. Oh, yeah. Wrestling oh. fans are worse than movie buffs. Movie buffs will shit all Way over worse. movies. Oh, they're absolutely the worst. But wrestling fans will shit all over everything, yet still watch but then complain about it to no end just be just, just, or watch it so they could just continue to complain. I, yeah. whereas me, I'm a little bit of a different wrestling fan. There's things I don't like. Yes. There's things I've been vocal on, but a lot of the times I just enjoy the product, what it is. And essentially it's For literally sure. just two people, good versus evil. Somebody's got to yep. triumph. And that really is the most simplistic way to describe wrestling. It's always good versus evil, plain and simple. And also the 100%. occasional fact that there are men and women with no belt fighting for a belt. That's the yeah. irony of it too. No wrestlers, very few wrestlers actually wear a belt out to the ring, yet they're always fighting for a belt. And oh, 100% even... of the time. <laughs> that's funny. No, that's a good that's a good way to put it. I think like I always define wrestling as um uh, a soap opera with um professional stunt people. Hmm. Professional stunt actors, right? Like they're stunt people doing a soap opera. Um and I think one of my good friends uh, who actually introduced me to wrestling, he he was like, "Well, you know that like wrestling WWE is very famous or is very popular among like immigrant communities because there are a lot of people who move here who have English as a second language and the stories are just so clear. It's like, that's a bad guy. That's a good guy. There, here's the bad guy cheating. Here's the good guy winning in spite of cheating, right? And so like, that's part of the reason that my family is Puerto Rican, um, but I was raised in a community where there weren't a lot of Latinos like around us. And so when I kind of went to college and expanded, I talked to a lot of other and started re watching wrestling too. I would talk to a lot of other like immigrant friends and family and they were like oh yeah we loved wrestling because abuela understood it do you know what i mean like it was easy it was super easy um and i think that sometimes i don't know if this is a qualm you have with modern wrestling but i think sometimes we lose sight of the core of wrestling which is like it's a fight you gotta have some realism mm -hmm. i completely agree you and i are you and i are vibing on the same wavelength also yeah. too side note i forgot to tell you my favorite found footage film you this may shock a lot of people oh, yeah but it's the poughkeepsie tapes I oh, love I've never it. seen that. Okay. Never seen I them. Watch it. Enjoy it. Writing it down. Poughkeepsie. Yeah, the Poughkeepsie tapes. P-O-U-G-H. It, it's, it's so weird and it's so bad, 
but it's so good. It's one of those movies where you're like, huh, I didn't see that coming, yet I enjoyed it. I would strongly recommend not eating anything more than a bag of chips or popcorn while watching it, though, because there are some parts where you're like, yeah, yeah. Like RoboCop? <laughs> Yes, Robocop is so gory. I just rewatched that with my husband the last night. And I was like, "Man, that's this is way worse than I remember." <laughs> I know you yeah, gotta love okay. those '80s action flicks that uh, that you always thought were like when you were a kid. You're like, "Yes, this is awesome." You watch it as an adult, you're like, "Not so awesome. Not so awesome Gross. in a lot of ways. Bad acting and really over the top explosion of fight scenes. Like some yeah. stuff that isn't even like one of my guilty pleasures: Tango and Cash. Okay, Kurt oh, Russell, yeah. Sylvester Stallone in an action movie together playing two cops that were accused of being dirty cops amazing absolutely amazing it's a, it's a good one for me it's one i enjoy almost yeah. as much as i enjoy die hard here's a here's a fun question for you is die hard have you seen die hard it is a okay. christmas movie thank you okay yes, thank you it is a thank christmas you. movie thank you i knew where you were going it's a christmas movie my wife's gonna I'm see a, this I'm clip saying... and completely agree disagree with both of us but babe you're wrong vicky agrees with me Die Hard is a Christmas movie, okay? It is. Thank you. Babe, you're right about everything else that he says, though. Anything else he says, you're wrong about, you're actually right. Yeah, 100%. 100% of the rest of the time. This true. is the only thing. That's true. Yeah, and to your husband, I'll give some advice. Uh, she's always right. It's <laughs> way easier if, if she just, if she's always right, buddy. So just understand that. You're only two months in in married life. I got 15 years. She's always right, okay? Because you I'm don't want to sleep on the couch. I've slept on the couch, and it sucks. She's always right. Yes, yes, dear. No problem. <laughs> Life is so much easier that way. Okay? So much easier. Good. We're all on the same page here. Absolutely. Uh, one more, one or two more questions, and I'll let you go enjoy the rest of your day. But when you, you look at um, your career thus far, the injury that set you back, and the 2022 that you've had, how do you build in 2023? Mm. What are goals yeah. for Vicky? Because you've already hit quite a few in 2022 in your return back. How do you build from there? What's year, you know, year two, two and a half look like for you in 2023? That's a really good question. Um, oof. It's also a hard question because there's a lot of stuff I want to do. Um, I've been fortunate. I've worked for WWE, NXT, and AEW this year as an extra or an enhancement talent. Um, I wasn't on TV for WWE or NXT, but I've been backstage a number of times. Uh, and that was a goal for 2022 was just to get my foot in the door. And I did that. Um, every goal that I've set out to accomplish this year, I've, I've done. And so I think for 2023, I want to set some realistic goals because I don't, I don't want to go on a downward trend here. I think I would like to, um, I'd like to wrestle on TV next year uh, somehow, even if it's 30 seconds of me just getting my ass beat. I'm totally, totally happy with that. Um, Cause I know where I'm at and I'm happy with where I'm at. Um, I'd like to win a belt. That would be really cool. Um, I would like to be a mainstay at two promotions that are, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, well, well-known, well-known promotions that draw big audiences. Um, I'd like to do that. Uh, and I would like to, um, I wanna have 10,000 followers on Instagram. It's a petty one. I want 10k Instagram followers. Make it happen, I've been guys. Sitting She's pretty at 5600, and I'm like, I want more. Absolutely. <laughs> I got a you lot know. of stuff to say. Um, oh, and I would like to run or co co run a wrestling show here in Jacksonville next year uh, with an experienced promoter because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but I would like to, with someone who's experienced as a ring, like to co like rent it, do whatever, and run a show that has multiple women's matches and then just like a lot of good good wrestling. And we'll probably front load it with some improv on the front. And then like do some stand up in the middle. So like an improv comedy wrestling, improv comedy and stand up comedy wrestling show. That's a big goal for 2023. That that would be a show I would love to see. Unfortunately, I'm in Canada, yeah. so getting out to Jacksonville might be a little bit of a tall task. Ah, bummer. I know, but but one day I'll make my I'll, I'll make my trip to Jacksonville and I'll I'll come see you, and it would be amazing to uh, to see you work live. Now, um, what about traveling? Do you have goals to want to come to Canada? Countries? Yes. Want to come to Canada? Yes. Book bring this me to Canada, please. Absolutely. I know a couple great promoters out here. I'm going to get on the horn with them and I'm going to say, guys, Thank book you. Vicky Dreamboat. She's fantastic. She's a sweetheart in and out of the ring. Absolutely. And I appreciate that. I guess this this question is kind of like a bonus question. But when you look at the women that are on the indies and you've had a, a, a matches with a couple of great talents thus far, yeah. do you have somebody that you have your eye on that you'd love to get in the ring with and work if given the opportunity and the right booking? Yeah, there are a few. Um, I mean, I'm fortunate enough. I'm actually booked against Lady Frost in January. At Amazing. MEW in Atlanta or in Georgia, that's going to be crazy. Um, I've wa I've watched her most of the time that I've watched wrestling. So when I when I got that book in, I was like, me, little old me, I'm already training for that match because it's just going to be it's going to be nuts. Uh, so that obviously like that already checks that box off. Um, oh man, honestly, every single woman at um, at Shine, I want to work. I want to go to Shine and just work everybody. 
Um, I worked uh, Lindsay Snow a couple of times and I love her. I want to work her again, but in a, in a competitive singles match, I think that would be really fun. Um, oh, oh, when Catalina Perez comes back, when Catalina Perez comes back, I want to work her so bad. I hope she heals up quick because I think she's insanely talented and I've been watching her like pretty much her entire career um, and just been like, I want to wrestle her so bad. Uh, so that is another one. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, so many names. I don't want to say too many because I don't want to leave anybody out. That's obvious. But yeah, definitely like I'll wrestle. I'll wrestle anybody. But those are some that I'm really excited about that are already coming up. Absolutely. Well, that sounds like a great you got yourself a great list, some obtainable, very obtainable goals for 2023. <laughs> and I hope to see you on my television set more. And I hope we can get you back at Straight Talk Wrestling because so we continue the yeah. conversation and talk. And I do want to officially let you know now you are now a member of the Straight Talk Wrestling family. So anytime you do Boom. want to come back. I know that's that was probably a big goal for 2022, right? To be part of the Straight Talk Wrestling family. Now it's done. done. Finally, first first week of December. Boom. Almost yeah. didn't make the cut, but I made oh. it. <laughs> uh, Vicky, shout out your socials for everyone so they can keep tabs on yeah. your journey. We can help you get to those 10,000 followers and hopefully build enough buzz to get you down here to North and you can start repping and wrestling down here, which would be phenomenal. Please. I lived in Alaska for five years, so I have a strong connection to, to um, the Yukon Territory and BC. I want to go and hang out all over Canada. But first of all, you can go to VickyDreamBoat.com and get your very own Vicky Dreamboat t-shirt. Uh, the sleeves roll up. You'll become strong. I don't know what happens, but uh, I got t-shirts. I got sweatshirts on Dreamboat.com. It just redirects you to a Brain Buster Tees site. That would be super great. That's how I pay for gas to get to wrestling bookings. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram at Vicky Dreamboat, Twitter at Vicky Dreamboat. Facebook.com slash Vicky Dreamboat sounds right. Um, and uh, uh, I'm on TikTok, but I'm real bad at it. Just real good at watching TikToks, real bad at making them. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm bad too. My daughter and I have made a couple. Thank God she knows what's going on in this generation. Yeah, yeah. I have no clue. I have no clue. Have her, uh, one, have her run I, mine too. <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely. You know what? We'll have to get you and her to do a duet together that she can help you. Perfect. Amazing. My one final request. Look in the yeah. camera. Give me that Vicky Dreamboat intensity and tell everybody that they are watching Straight Talk Wrestling and they should subscribe because this is one of the best podcasts you've ever been on. Shameless plug for me. On it. Hey, everybody, this is Vicky, the Captain Dreamboat, and you are watch watching Straight Talk Wrestling. I got to start over because I messed it up. Ugh. All right, just edit that part out. It never All happened. Right. <laughs> hey, everybody, this is Vicky, the Captain Dreamboat, and you are watching Straight Talk Wrestling, and you should subscribe. Hit that subscribe button and ring the little notification bell so you always know when there's something new. Awesome. Fantastic. Got you. you are a phenomenal person. I'm so honored to be able to sit down and have this conversation with you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Again, guys, thanks, my guest, Vicky Dreamboat, uh, licensed captain for the Coast yes. Guard. Never served, but licensed captain. Yeah. Shout out to everyone who has served, though, because if you're fighting the good fight, we all hope you come home for the holidays or are able to spend time with your family. And as we get closer to Christmas, let's remember that this month is huge about peace, about celebrating differences, but also respecting one another individually and together. And above all else, just love each other a little bit more. As always, I'm your host and boy, George McKay. Peace, love, and wrestling. See you guys next time. Peace. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to tune in next week for another great episode on all available podcast platforms and hosted on Podbean. Also, check us out on YouTube at Straight Talk Wrestling, on Instagram at Straight Talk Wrestling, on Facebook at Straight Talk Wrestling, and on Twitter at underscore Straight Talk. And if you feel the need to buy some sweet merch, check us out on ProWrestlingTees.com. Leaving the scene with no trace, none in my league. You out of place. I'm not at the top. I'm out of space. And eat with us. We're out of place. I'm doing fine. I'm feeling great. You're not my fan. You can't relate. Straight talk going state to state.